This videotape is a presentation of an environment to experiment with 3D interaction techniques. These examples were all recorded live from a high-end graphics workstation running our integrated graphics platform. Some widgets are entirely behavioral with no actual 3D representation. Here we select a Swiss Army knife and gesturally translate, rotate, and scale it in three dimensions with the 2D mouse. The virtual sphere algorithm is used for rotation. Translates and scales are performed by projecting 2D mouse motion onto the 3D object axes. Another type of behavioral widget allows an object to be manipulated in the space of a second object. Here we snap the cross logo to the surface of the knife. With the mouse we can pick a point on the surface of the cross. We then drag to the knife and the cross snaps to its surface. As we continue to move the mouse, notice how the cross follows the contour of the surface. We align the cross with the case by rotating about the surface normal. These color space widgets combine behavior and geometry in a prototype interactive illustration. We can change the knife's color by dragging the 3D sliders for red, green, and blue components. We can also directly drag in the 3D color cube. Notice how the values in the sliders, the HSV cone, and the knife color update simultaneously. Interconnections between objects called dependencies allow these types of links. This widget is both an ed educational comparison of color spaces and a useful tool. It is often useful to constrain gestural movements. Here we create a set of object handles which can be applied to any geometric object in the scene. They remain aligned with the coordinate space of the knife as we gesturally rotate and translate it. By dragging on one of the handles, translation is constrained to that axis. Note that the knife and the object handles are constructed from the same set of geometric primitives. However, the handles are assigned interactive behavior. Here we present a widget for specifying deformations constructed from reconfigured object handles. Pulling up on the green handle tapers the object. By rotating the second handle, we twist the object. The range for these operations is determined by the space between both the upright handles. We can change this range by dragging either handle. The red handle at the end of the rack bends the object in any direction. A further refinement of the rack allows finer control of deformations by allowing two ranges, one for taper and one for twist. These ranges can be changed independently to allow greater control over the deformations. Because the deformation is applied about the central axis of the rack, we can make a spiral corkscrew for our knife by translating the object away from the rack and then twisting it. Deformations normally require a numerical specification of multiple complex parameters. The rack abstracts out the essentials of these operations in an intuitive interface. Our last example is a mock-up of an interface for visualizing information developed at Xerox PARC. This cone tree is used to visualize the geometric hierarchy of the Swiss Army knife. We can see the individual tabs for sub-objects in the model. Clicking on a tab highlights and rotates that tab to the front of the space. The object which it represents is also highlighted and animated. The cone tree combines rotational widgets with animation to present a more comprehensive visualization of a geometric model. These are simple examples developed within our framework. In the future, we hope to more fully explore complex 3D metaphors and even develop widgets for creating and modifying other widgets in a 3D user interface design system. By introducing a suggestive visual representation for each of the handles, the rack widget becomes more self-disclosing. For instance, the twisted shape of the twist handle indicates its function. By pulling on the twisted handle, the object twists in direct proportion to the angle through which the handle was rotated. When we push down on the taper handle, the object is made to taper down to the height of the bar. When we pull on the bend handle, the object bends in the same direction. Pulling on one handle of this rack changes the amplitude of the wave operation. Similarly, translating the other bar directly changes the phase. The distance between the two bars controls the frequency. These parameters are explicitly controlled by the user's manipulation of the rack. Other parameters are implicitly controlled by the same widget. Here, the number of tessellations in the object is increased in proportion to the frequency of the wave to maintain a smoothly curved object. In this segment, a free-floating anchor and handle are used to specify arbitrary bends in 3-space. This widget aids the user's understanding of the deformation operation by adding a visual representation of the curve between the anchor and handle, and by keeping the bend handle oriented towards the object. The behavior of this rack is no different from the previous rack that oriented the object. It is an example of how modifying only a widget's geometry can change the perceived behavior. This free-floating twist rack includes a widget in the form of a corkscrew. This representation immediately reveals the twisting nature of the widget. 
As we rotate the corkscrew, the twist angle of the object changes accordingly. However, the widget is free to rotate in all directions. It has more degrees of freedom than it actually controls in the deformation. Consequently, after a few transformations, the corkscrew becomes misaligned and it is difficult to predict the effects of subsequent changes. In this version of this same rack, we remove some of the degrees of freedom of the corkscrew. It orients itself towards the anchor and only rotates in the plane perpendicular to the axis of deformation. Rotations now correlate exactly with the twisted object. In this example, removing some degrees of freedom makes the widget more visually compelling and predictable. It is important that the actual degrees of freedom of the widget match those of the action it performs.